Not long ago, kids routinely showed up for dinner with dirt under their fingernails and muddy sneakers. There were neighborhood creeks to explore, critters to collect, and big trees to climb. But an increasingly urban California has left ever fewer undeveloped spaces for kids to enjoy in their everyday lives. This may explain the growing number of urban farms that now double as nature camps for young children. Legacy writer Shayla Farzan reports on a day camp at an organic farm along the American River near Sacramento. Soil-borne farms tends to 40 acres of fruit trees and crops right up against rows of closely packed homes in the city of Rancho Cordova. Cattle and sheep do their part to keep the soil fertile, along with a pot-bellied pig named Whiskey and a very talkative rooster. Was that the rooster again? And that's what the farm calls a sprout. She's one in a clutch of six and seven-year-olds here to learn the story of vegetables. Is that corn? It looks like corn. Is that corn? Mm -hmm. It's corn! I love corn. Just about everything on the farm arouses the children's curiosity. A tarp-covered mound in a field has them wondering what's hiding underneath. Guy Galante, the farm's education director, lets them make the discovery on their own. Is it a bear cave? Could be a bear cave. They can. It's too small. If you want to walk down there and look under there, you can. Okay. Watch yeah. out, though, in case it's a bear. Oh, well, then you should come with us. No, I'm too afraid. I know. I'm going. I'm going. Go. Go Let me see. It tastes that. It tastes! Guy! It's Guy! Mr. Guy, as the sprouts call him, begins each day with an introduction to a farmer and a vegetable. Some of the greens look a little strange to the kids. If you'd like to try it, you can. It's it's uh, a green you can add to salad. It's actually a little tiny bit spicy, but it tastes kind of nutty. And this is called arugula. What's it called? Arugula. Arugula. Identifying crops is just the start. The program gives children a hands-on understanding of the whole food cycle, from field to fork. We planted potatoes. Um, they, they saw the har farmers harvest some that were already harvested. And then we went and ate potatoes. So we want them to see the whole process, the planting, the harvesting, the, the preparing, and then the, the enjoying of the food too. On this warm and sunny morning, the Sprouts harvested five different vegetables for their farewell lunch. This is their last day on the farm. You usually cut cauliflower with a knife, but clippers will work. Can I hold it? You can hold it and give it to Matthew to put into the basket. Okay. Ooh. Can I feel it? There it is. Yeah, check Can it I out. Feel it? Yeah, you let everybody check it out. Can I? Yeah. It feels. Will, you, will you pass it down so they can it look really, at it and feel really, it too? Really weird. It feels really weird. Feels weird. Oh, and I know what we can get. We can get some sweet peppers too. You what guys the? like sweet peppers? No, I don't, I don't know what it tastes like. See, this is called a banana pepper because it kind of looks like a banana. <laughs> After the harvest, the kids head for the outdoor kitchen. They're pretty sure they know what comes next. Yummy pizza, yummy pizza, yummy pizza, yummy pizza. <laughs> Allie Adams, the cook at Soilborn, has been stoking an adobe wood-burning oven all morning. Teenage volunteers chop the kids' collection of cauliflower, peppers, squash, basil, and garlic for the pizza toppings. Then the sprouts do the fun part. You're gonna get a ball of dough and you get to roll it out and make yeah. it, and then make your own pizza. Now I can come over to all these wonderful veggies that you chose. Mm -mm. And some cheese. I'll just put onions in the mine. Good, that's great. You need to put at least one veggie on your pizza. Or two you want. I'm just gonna let cheese. Two is even better. Hey Nate, what are you putting on your I'm putting basil and cheese I on it. I'm going to put onion and cheese. I found a pizza with an ice cream on the top and a chair on top of an ice cream. I know. Look at the top of the muffin top of the muffin. And then you could swallow it without even... Youth education programs are a fast-growing part of soil-born farms, a nonprofit organization best known for its deliveries of fresh, organic produce to local homes and restaurants. 
They started in 2007 with 10 students down the block at Cordova High School. But this past year, they hosted as many as 2,500 youths in their day camps, college internships, and school field trips. It's not hard to see why teachers and parents welcome these urban farm programs. Too much of the time their kids are indoors, glued to a virtual world on a PC or a television. Again, Mr. Guy. You ask any kid where their food comes from, it's the grocery store. Or where does the river come from? They think it comes from the ocean. Well, I guess in some terms it does. Um, or if they know that it's, they think it comes from Folsom Lake. But then you ask them where does Folsom Lake come from, it's like, I don't know. The urban farm camps provide a way for children to bond with nature, not to mention fresh vegetables. Mr. Guy says the kids are more likely to take to the veggies after picking, preparing, and eating them with their peers. A lot of these kids have never seen or heard of kohlrabi. Um, and then we have kids coming next week into the farm stand buying kohlrabi and introducing that to their parents who may not have had kohlrabi. So I think it's going to influence the way that um, the, the, their future food choices and also um, their, their future choices as far as how they want to spend their time maybe outdoors. Kohlrabi, by the way, is one of the scariest vegetables you could introduce to a child. It's a round root described by one nutritionist as a cross between an octopus and a space capsule. So if a week at veggie camp has kids taking to these ugly tubers, imagine what other barriers might be broken on the farm. A lot more than what we're doing gets talked about. Like some youth will share with me some personal things that wouldn't come out, you know, in a classroom. One kid said, hey, Mr. Guy, you know, have you ever liked a girl and you weren't sure if she liked you back, you know, while we were digging in the soil, you know, he was, it was just quiet. And then that question came up, you know, and kids that are talking about their parents' divorces or drug abuse or something like that. Now, I'm not a counselor. It's not my job. But I'm saying that the environment is so that kids feel safe here and feel safe sharing that. And I think that bring it back all around about is that it's okay if it's not perfect in, in a farm, you know. <laughs> Squirrels are going to eat your stuff. Your rows are going to be crooked. All, not all your sunflowers are going to sprout. And that's life. You know, that's just life. For The Legacy Project, I'm Shayla Farzan.